All right, let's talk about the Bulls. Are they going to make the playoffs? They won 22 games a year ago. Markkanen and Wendell played about half the season. Otto even missed production. some games after they traded for him. Levine had his best year. They're hoping that... Who did they draft again? Kobe White can be a big deal at point guard. Chris Dunn has some role on the team. I don't know what it is. First thing is it's probably going to take around 40 wins to make the playoffs in the East. I mean, the Pistons won 41 and they were the 8th seed last year. So, can the Bulls make an 18-game jump? Honestly, when I put it like that, I don't think it's an insane idea. Now, when you dive into each of the teams that are going to be competing, and the fact that Miami is now in this discussion, really, with um, the way they look, it does become a little more interesting. Uh, I mean, I figure Lowry Markinen can probably have his best season where he's putting up 20-something a game because the guys averaged, what, like 18 a game in his second season, and that was with all the weirdness. I mean, I did a whole video on Markinen already, so I don't want to repeat it, but I'm assuming him, Otto, and Levine are going to do their thing. And the only fear I have is Levine over-dribbling, but um, I don't know. I feel like between Otto getting a few more shots and ball-handling opportunities with this team and Markinen, who's going to hopefully play the whole year or close to it, that we're just not going to see as much of Levine doing everything on top of Kobe White having the ball, so... I don't know. I guess I'm optimistic that Levine is just going to understand, like, it's not my place to run the entire offense anymore. Now, with that being said, I'm still expecting some frustrating Zach Levine stuff, things, like over-dribbling occasionally, taking bad pull-ups, whatever. But I don't think it's going to happen enough to where it kills the team's offense or anything. If we move on to Otto, I just think he's going to be doing more. Like, he's not just going to be the dude playing off the ball. I mean, what did he shoot with the Bulls in, like, the 15 games? He took about three, maybe two and a half more shots than he took when he was on the Wizards. He took one more three a game. And I'd like to think that that's the beginning of a trend that can keep on keeping on where he's just got the ball in more situations and he can actually dribble a little bit more and things like that. I mean, his usage rate was up by like 3%. Granted, it's only 15 games, I know. But I just think the Bulls view him in a bigger role than the Wizards did. Now, some of it's also auto, just has to be a little more aggressive, but again, I just, I find myself to be optimistic about the auto porter doing more with the Bulls thing. Now, before I get to the the rookie in Kobe White and the second year dude in Wendell, I do want to say I liked the Sadoransky and Thad Young signings. Sado was always a, just a good player for the Wizards, box score numbers not out of this world, but just good in all areas. Thad Young, yeah, he can't shoot, but I just think he's a really smart dude who's known how to do the things he does well, whether it's just like the in-between game, the floaters, cutting, attacking the glass, being good enough to attack closeouts occasionally. Like It can sometimes be awkward with Thad Young just sitting in the corner and teams leaving him open and him being hesitant to shoot threes. I understand that. But I feel like among all of the guys who are like that, Thad Young is one of the few who still helps the team win. Part of this is also because defensively, he was kind of really good a year ago. And I like how he can play with Markkanen, if Markkanen's a center, if Wendell's out there, that stuff. Now we get to Kobe White and Wendell. If there's a reason for me to say the Bulls don't make the playoffs, it might be because of these two. Not that I have anything really against them, it's just Kobe's a rookie, and Wendell has played 40 games, and I mean, it's possible that you can make a positive impact in that little amount of time, but especially for a center who offensively needs to get better, I think that's a lot to ask for. I mean, I do think... Eventually, Wendell is going to be this versatile defender who 
can do a lot of stuff on offense, make shots and post up and things like that. But in his second season for a team that's going to have a lot of dudes shooting the ball, and I fear that Wendell could be a little bit of an afterthought offensively, I just don't know. I mean, I'm expecting the defense to be good. I'm not expecting it to be amazing this early on in his career. And I don't think he's good enough to make up for the potential defensive problems throughout the rest of the roster. I mean, Levine, Markin, and Otto, none of those three are known as defenders. So that's something I'm a little scared of. I do think if this team is going to go on a run, it's going to be because of their offense. Like, they just have a lot of shot making and... I mean, hell, Kobe White projects to be a pretty solid shooter as well. Maybe not like on the move, but at least off the catch. Now, I guess there is some versatility here. If the team needs a little bit more offense, could try throwing Denzel Valentine in there. Dude could make shots. If you need more toughness and defense and just more Tony Allen-ness, you could throw Chris Dunn in there. I think Chris Dunn is still definitely going to have a role for this team. Whether it's starting, coming off the bench, don't totally know. I do think Kobe White is going to be better than Dunn, offensively at least. Defensively, Dunn probably has the edge, so you could use both of them. And I just kind of look at all the positions where I say, alright, Chris Dunn can defend one and twos, maybe some threes. Sato can play on or off the ball. Levine can do that. Um... Maybe Markkinen can play center. Thad Young can play with Wendell and Markkinen. There's there's a lot of that stuff going on for this team. So there is some reason to be optimistic. But I think um, I think it does come back to like how good is the playmaking on this team. Because we just don't know how good Kobe White's going to be out of the gate. Chris Dunn's playmaking was probably the one thing to be most excited about with him. Even then I don't think it was like some super amazing thing. And then you have Levine who can make passes, but there's questions about if he can really run an offense. So there's some of that. I think if I had to predict a win total for this team, it'd probably be like mid to high 30s, which probably does not get you into the playoffs in the East, but they could be in contention for most of, if not all, of the season. I just don't see a big drop-off coming from anybody, you know? I guess the popular pick would be the Pistons, but, I mean, assuming Blake is still really good, which, you know, that's still kind of an if. It's not like he's been totally healthy his whole career. Um, Then you have Drummond, who, yeah, he's frustrating, but he still helps you get to about 40-something wins. Um, Then you have the Magic, where I I just don't see a big drop-off coming from Orlando. Steve Clifford has them just playing really good basketball. They were awesome defensively, even with Vucevic playing so many minutes last year. And then from there, it seems like the East is kind of tight, and Miami is going to be in this as well. So, is it possible the Bulls can get in? Yeah, but if you make me pick, I don't think it's going to happen this season, but it will be a fun year. I don't think this is going to be just a 20-something game season that you're just you're just like I can't wait until this is over if you're a Bulls fan you know so yeah it'll be good um I don't know 37 38 wins I guess